Good day, little friends and storytime parents. Welcome to another storytime session with your friendly librarian, Miss Tiffany, at your MWR Community Library. Today, I picked some of my favorite stories to share with you all. So let's begin. So this is Fox and Chick, The Party, and Other Stories. So we're going to read, I think there's about three stories in this book. So I think we're going to go ahead and just read all three of them. All right, here we go. And so our stories, if you can see, The Party, Good Soup, Sit Still. Okay, here we go. The Party. Knock, knock. It's me, Chick. I know it's you, Chick. I can see you. What are you doing? I am reading this book. How can you be reading that book if you're talking to me? You're right, Chick. I was reading this book. And I will go back to reading right now. Slam. Knock, knock. It's still me, Chick. May I use your bathroom? Of course you may. Thank you, Fox. Very kind of you. Chick, are you okay? Crash, thud, splash. Chick, I am coming in. Chick! Oh my gosh, what did he do? What is going on in here? Can't you tell? I'm having a party with my friends. In my bathroom? Oh, I see. Let's go, guys. I guess he didn't mean it when he said I could use his bathroom. <sighs> That's the end of the first story. All right, friends, let's start our next story. This is called Good Soup. Fox. Foxes are supposed to eat field mice, not carrots. I don't like to eat field mice. Fox. Foxes are supposed to eat frogs. Not onions. I don't like to eat frogs. Fox. Foxes are supposed to eat moles, not potatoes. I don't like to eat moles. Foxes are supposed to eat grasshoppers, not parsley. I don't like to eat grasshoppers. Sometimes I wonder if you are a real fox. What else do you think foxes are supposed to eat? Foxes are supposed to eat chipmunks. And they're supposed to eat squirrels, lizards, and little birds. <gasps> little birds? Yes, Fox. Little bur- Uh-oh. Uh ah! See? He's got up his carrots and his parsley. What do you think he's making? Chick! And he's looking through the door. He's a little scared. He's a little hesitant. Good soup. Thank you, Chick. <laughs> I am glad you don't like to eat little birds, Fox. At least not today. The end. All right, so my next story and the final story of this book is called Sit Still. This is a good spot. I will paint a nice landscape. What are you doing, Fox? I'm painting the landscape. Landscapes are boring. You should paint something more exciting. Like what? Like a portrait of me. If you sit still on that rock, I will paint your portrait. No problem. I can sit still for as long as you want. The rock is not very soft. Of course it's not very soft. It is a rock. I will go and get a pillow, then I will sit still on that rock. So he left, and now he's coming back. What does he have in his hand, friends? What's that under his arm? It's a pillow. Okay, let's see if he can sit still now. Fox! You can paint my portrait now. Just sit still, please. I'm hungry. You just ate three bowls of soup. 
I will go and get a snack. Then I will sit very still on that rock. Crunch, crunch, crunch. How's that portrait coming? Just sit very still, please. I am thirsty. Of course you're thirsty. You ate a whole bag of potato chips. I will go and get a drink. Then I will sit very, very still on that rock. Slurp, slurp, slurp. Fox, you can finish my portrait now. I am done with my painting. You were done with my portrait? I cannot paint your portrait because you did not sit still. You're a good painter, Fox. Thank you, Chick. You should paint a portrait of me one day. Oh, Chick. Great idea, Chick. One day, I will. It's the end, Fox. Only for now, Chick. The end. What silly stories in this book. I love this book. It's so much fun. Okay, but how about we keep going and we read one more story. So we'll do four stories for today. And this is a tale of the Flopsy Bunnies. And this is by Beatrix Potter. Here we go. It is said that the effect of eating too much lettuce is soporific. I have never felt sleepy after eating lettuces. But then I am not a rabbit. They certainly had a very soporific effect upon the Flopsy Bunnies. When Benjamin Bunny grew up, he married his cousin Flopsy. They had a large family, and they were very improvident and cheerful. I do not remember the separate names of their children. They were generally called the Flopsy Bunnies. As there was not always quite enough to eat, Benjamin used to borrow cabbages from Flopsy's brother, Peter Rabbit, who kept a nursery garden. Sometimes, Peter Rabbit had no cabbages to spare. When this happened, the Flopsy Bunnies went across the field to a rubbish heap in the ditch outside Mr. McGregor's garden. Mr. McGregor's rubbish heap was a mixture. There were jam pots and paper bags and mountains of chopped grass from the mowing machine, which always tasted oily, and some rotten vegetable marrows and an old boot or two. One day, oh joy, there were a quantity of overgrown lettuces which had shot into flour. The Flopsy Bunnies simply stuffed lettuces by degrees, one after another. They were overcome with slumber and lay down in the mown grass. Benjamin was not so much overcome as his children. Before going to sleep, he was sufficiently wide awake to put a paper bag over his head to keep off the flies. The little Flopsy Bunnies slept delightfully in the warm sun. From the lawn beyond the garden came the distant clackety sound of the mowing machine. The blue bottles buzzed about the wall and a little old mouse picked over the rubbish among the jam pots. I can tell you her name. She was called Thomasina Tittlemouse, a wood mouse with a long tail. She rustled across the paper bag and awakened Benjamin Bunny. The mouse apologized profusely and said that she knew Peter Rabbit. While she and Benjamin were talking, close under the wall, they heard a heavy tread above their heads, and suddenly Mr. McGregor emptied out a sack full of lawn mowings right upon the top of the sleeping Flopsy Bunnies. Benjamin shrank down under his paper bag. The mouse hid in a jam pot. The little rabbits smiled sweetly in their sleep under the shower of grass. They did not awake because the lettuces had been so soporific. They dreamt that their mother, Flopsy, was tucking them up in a hay bed. Mr. McGregor looked down after emptying his sack. He saw some funny little brown tips of ears sticking up through the lawn mowings. He stared at them for some time. Presently, a fly settled on one of them and it moved. 
Mr. McGregor climbed down onto the rubbish heap. One, two, three, four, five, six little rabbits, said he as he dropped them into his sack. The Flopsy Bunnies dreamt that their mother was turning them over in bed. They stirred a little in their sleep, but still they did not wake up. Mr. McGregor tied up the sack and left it on the wall. He went to put away the mowing machine. While he was gone, Mrs. Flopsy Bunny, who had remained at home, came across the field. She looked suspiciously at the sack and wondered where everybody was. Then the mouse came out of her jam pot and Benjamin took the paper bag off his head and they told a doleful tale. Benjamin and Flopsy were in despair. They could not undo the string. But Mrs. Tittlemouse was a resourceful person. She nibbled a hole in the bottom corner of the sack. The little rabbits were pulled out and pinched to wake them. Their parents stuffed the empty sack with three rotten vegetable marrows, an old blacking brush, and two decayed turnips. Then they all hid under a bush and watched for Mr. McGregor. Mr. McGregor came back and picked up the sack and carried it off. He carried it hanging down as if it were rather heavy. The Flopsy Bunnies followed at a safe distance. They watched him go into his house, and then they crept up to the window to listen. Mr. McGregor threw down the sack on the stone floor in a way that would have been extremely painful to the Flopsy Bunnies if they had happened to be inside of it. They could hear him drag his chair on the flags and chuckle. One, two, three, four, five, six little rabbits, said Mr. McGregor. Eh? What's that? What have they been spoiling now? inquired Mrs. McGregor. One, two, three, four, five, six little fat rabbits, repeated Mr. McGregor, counting on his fingers. One, two, three. Don't you be silly. What do you mean, you silly old man? In the sack. One, two, three, four, five, six, replied Mr. McGregor. The youngest Flopsy Bunny got upon the windowsill. Mrs. McGregor took hold of the sack and felt it. She said she could feel six, but they must be old rabbits because they were so hard and all different shapes. Not fit to eat, but the skins will do fine to line my old cloak. Line your old cloak, shouted Mr. McGregor. I shall sell them and buy myself backy. I shall skin them and cut off their heads. Mrs. McGregor untied the sack and put her hand inside. When she felt the vegetables, she became very angry. She said that Mr. McGregor had done it on purpose. And Mr. McGregor was very angry too. One of the rotten marrows came flying through the kitchen window and hit the youngest Flopsy Bunny. It was rather hurt. Then Benjamin and Flopsy thought it was time to go home. So Mr. McGregor did not get his tobacco and Mrs. McGregor did not get her rabbit skins. But next Christmas, Thomasina Tittlemouse got a present of enough rabbit wool to make herself a cloak and a hood and a handsome muff and a pair of warm mittens. The end. All right, friends. Thank you for sharing a special story time with me. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye-bye.